Oh, okay. Hey, we're on the air. Um, <laughs> welcome to the trade. What episode are we on? Is this five? Number five. This is number five. Cool. Um, we have our first guest with us today. Um, Dave. Well, is it Barrett? yourself, Carrie. Well, fine. I'm Carrie. <laughs> Carrie Potter from Juniper, writer and colorist of Juniper.com. JuniperComic.com. I don't even know my own URL. Um, and then we've got Stephen Gillen, who is from Antics. Anticscomic.com. Yes. And then Melanie Chitwood. Yeah, I've got a steamandnonsense.tumblr.com. Check out her steampunk stuff. And then uh, Dave. Is it Barrick or Barack? Barrick. Barrick. <laughs> I thought so. Um, Get that a lot these days, I assume. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually had someone ask. Are you related? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, really? god. Think about that for a second. I've been getting that crap for Harry Potter since I was in middle school. <laughs> okay, you know that. Where's Harry? Bro, I don't know. <laughs> um, in my pants. I don't know. Yeah, a, uh, <laughs> Dave does uh, Girl Power at girlpowercomic.com, right? Yes. Girl with G-R-R-L. Yeah, yes. I also, I also own G-I-R-L power. Oh, right. It nice. uh, Good thinking. forwards to... Which is a good idea. Yeah. Um, splendid. So, uh, Dave's our first guest. We're super excited. Um, <laughs> yep. that what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we're most excited because that somebody cares enough about the podcast to want to be on it. So that's awesome. Uh, so, Dave, uh, when did you start Girl Power, and what motivated you to write about what you're writing about? Uh, I started it, uh, I think it'll be three years in August or November, nice. so nearly three years now. Uh, and I just, I started doing it because I had the idea for maybe ten years, I mean like a long time, not necessarily as a webcomic, but mm -hmm. just as a comic project. Nice. Um, and at some point during that ten years, I was like, well, I can't really dedicate the time to do a 28 pages a month, but... Maybe I could just do a webcomic and do one a week. And that seems to have worked out so pretty well so far. Juggling with the day job and whatnot. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. That's always a Did you start it with the intention of transitioning into selling it in print, or was it always just the intention to keep it on the web for the most part and sell print as a merchandise? Or? Yeah, print as a merchandise. I mean, I, I'd love to do it as a full time job, but, mm. but before I started a webcomic, I went in with the you know, very realistic expectation that, you know, it would be three, four, or five years before I could even think about starting to make that happen. Because you have to build the audience, you have to get, you know, merchandise and that kind of, all that stuff right. rolling before yeah. you can, you know. Because I listen to, like, every episode of Webcomics Weekly and, like, every yeah. other Webcomics podcast mm -hmm. I could find. And they were all like, you know, maybe you can do this for a living. Maybe. If you're maybe, lucky yeah. and also really awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can be the yeah, one in a million yeah. that gets it overnight, or you can be the one in like a hundred thousand that gets it after five or ten years. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah it's kind Roll of a those dice. Thing. Yeah, it's kind of a long haul thing unless you go viral for whatever reason. Um, but yeah. it's good that you were you had that expectation from the beginning because I kind of didn't, and so I was uh, doing kind of a miserable job at the time, and I was uh, super upset that Juniper didn't take off right right away even though it had no reason to. Uh, <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing anyway. But um, that's a good point that, you know, for beginners, it's probably a good idea to, to sort of temper your expectations and realize that this is sort of a long-haul kind of thing. Yeah. And, and even no matter what I estimate my own talent at, you, you know, understanding that it's not a gag-a-day comic, it's not something that's likely to get these big viral hits. Right. I, I knew yeah. even if it was the best version of whatever it was that I'm doing, it would still take a long time to build a, a consistent audience that returns over and over. Yeah. It's so hard because, you know, people, I think they mentioned this on Webcomics Weekly once, but um, people have so many options for entertainment. And just in comics in general online, there's so many different things you could read. And it's hard to get any attention or traction, you know. Among yeah, a friend of mine people. once said, I don't know if he was paraphrasing someone else, but he said, we've moved past the information age to the attention age. Oh, that's a good point. 15, 15 seconds yeah. is all you can hope for, and if you can't grab someone in that, then... Yeah. You know. Then you don't know. bother. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
yeah, we we try I, on uh, Juniper. We really try to write that way. It's like, okay, somebody's going to consume this in ten seconds, maybe, yeah. probably less. You got to make this good, you know. And the same thing goes for long form. I think if you can't grab somebody quick, you know, things get yeah, and that's and that's funky. kind of why some of my pages are a little crowded. Mm -hmm. um, I try not to do. I, I guess I should explain what the comic is if some, anybody's listening who hasn't heard of it. So it's it's called Girl Power, and it's basically about superheroes. But it's not it's not a just you know skin tight outfits and battles and all that stuff. Um, not that there won't be fights and you know abundant cheesecake, but <laughs> it's it's mostly a slice of life type comic, like day in the life of. You know, mm -hmm. the, there's the adage that the best story is the extraordinary person happening uh, in the the uh, ordinary person in the extraordinary circumstance. But I always liked the extraordinary person in the ordinary circumstance, and I don't know why that is. Those, but, those are fun, though. Yeah, I, I remember reading X-Men, and, mm -hmm. okay, so they fight Magneto. Big deal. They fought him 30 times before. I don't care. But mm -hmm. the episode where they're just playing baseball. <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, hey, no powers. You can't fly. Stuff like that. That stuff really stuck with me. And so my comic is about the minutia. It's like it's like the the clerks of superheroes in a way, <laughs> nice. just all dialogue and the stuff in be, in between the fights. And like I said, not that there won't be. I mean, superheroes you have to have fights in it, but right. It's like behind yeah. the scenes yeah. stuff. Yeah. So who washes the uniforms of the X Men? Let's find out about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's a lot of stuff like that to consider. I don't know that I'm getting quite that in depth, but no, you know, no, no. It, it's. So, so the world is, there's superheroes, but there's not a lot of them, and they're basically coming out and saying, hey, we exist, and we're now a new branch of the military. Because it's not like the Avengers, where it's like, here's unlimited money, and you still get to have secret identities, you know, <laughs> and no accountability for anything you do. I mean, I don't right. know. Maybe yes, you're also than that. stars. And yeah. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's not realistic like you would might find in a novel about superheroes, but it's it's uh, something that's a good in between, I think. Um, there's there's some, you know oversight and there's some structure to it, but it's still mostly just personality driven. Which is cool because all of your characters have such great personalities, like really distinct personalities, I think. Yeah. Thanks. I've, it, I've gone through your archives. Um, like I don't know if it, have Melanie and Steven have you Oh yes. Yeah. I was actually just reading through it like two weeks ago, maybe. I got like halfway through, but I just finished it off today. Nice. Uh, cool. I read yeah. through it five times. Very, very good. Um, wow. Melanie likes it. <laughs> That's more than I have, to be honest. I haven't actually sat down and reread the entire thing in one sitting yet. <laughs> yeah. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Seems funny like too, which characters. helps. I have to say. Yes. Like going, yeah. Especially with behind the scenes sort of stuff, like it, there is that chance that it'll get sort of, I don't know, I don't want to say boring, but given the fact that everything is so funny and snappy, the comment, comments and the dialogue, it goes a hell of a long way to keeping you going yeah. in between them. And that's what I was saying about page, the pages kind of getting crowded. Since it's only going up once a week, I want to have each page be kind of self-contained, even if it's part of a larger scene. I, I yeah, try to avoid I having pages kind of end in the middle of a thought where yeah. each one kind of wraps up and there's also enough content. And while I'm drawing, I just can't help but like keep kind of writing it in my head. I could probably use an yeah. editor, honestly. But I keep, <laughs> oh, that'd be funny if she had a Batman belt buckle or it, just little teeny details in the background that give someone to actually a reason to look over a page again or, you know, pay yeah. close attention while they're reading. Put little Easter eggs in there, basically. Yeah. That's and making it all slightly self-contained per page does. I mean, I know you said it may not be quite as good as the Gagaday comics for the viral nature of stuff, but I think that definitely goes a hell of a long way. Like, I def I've definitely seen pictures posted of it here and there and been like, oh, maybe I should go and check out the archives because that looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me ask you something um, on story structure. Uh, have you ever heard of the terminology pantser versus a plotter? You know, somebody that does more of like an outline and they have some basic bullet points at least that they're trying to go by and they keep their story structure overall rolling? Or do you do it more or less by the seat of your pants? Um, I, haven't, um, I haven't heard that specific terminology, but the way I write it is... So I guess, I guess kind of the history of, of the story is, you know, I, I used to have friends where I would sit around and draw all the time. This is like pre-Nintendo. That's how old mm -hmm. I am. Um, 
<clears throat> but we would sit around and just draw. And then, like I said, I, I don't have any really any local friends that draw anymore. So um, I don't have that ability to sit and sit around and talk shop. So as as kind of time went on, we would draw less and less. You know, oh, hey, Street Fighter just came out for Nintendo, so we'd play until we'd have blisters on our thumbs and stuff. <laughs> but obviously get less drawing done. And so we were trying to find ways to come up, couple of, come up with ideas for comics that we could draw that would keep us motivated. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, honestly, I was like, how about a team of super-powered women? That's always fun to draw. And back when I originally thought of it, it was like, you know, the standard, you know, skin-tight outfits, perfect bodies, you know, just an mm -hmm. excuse to draw a lot of cheesecake. But <laughs> over literally a decade, it, it evolved into, you know, how that doesn't make as much sense. Why wouldn't they... Why wouldn't, even like the strongest superhero, like why doesn't Superman carry a pair of handcuffs with him, you know? Or like, you know, why don't they have other equipment? It just didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. it evolved from kind of a, just a very standard superhero team into the idea of them being militarized, they're police, they have equipment, they have support. Right. Um, More so of a BPRD over time thing. It evolved. So the story, I mean, I've been thinking about it for a long time. So as far as actually writing it down, I don't have the story written down, like an outline of like bullet points, but I know where all the major bits are, and I kind of, everything else happens, I just kind of bridge between those bits, mm -hmm. and like, here's a scene I know is going to happen, so how do I get there, and that's probably a bad way to do it, but I haven't, I haven't written myself into a corner yet, um, and part of that, I think, is because it is only once a week, so... That's I a can, tough pacing thing to try to pull off, too. Yeah, it is, but it gives me a lot of time to think about stuff that's going to happen. So mm -hmm. if a page goes up, I have at least a week to think about what's going to happen on the next page. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah, most yeah. pages, I have, you know, the next six pages already written. Um, mm -hmm. And I also have, uh, the way I actually write, I, I started off by writing, I would just do all my writing in Photoshop as I littered the bubbles. Mm -hmm. um, but Photoshop doesn't have inline spell checking, and so that led to a lot of spelling errors. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody who's ever posted a comic online, oh, I've spent 20 hours creating this comic, and the first comic comment is, oh, you missed an apostrophe on this, you know. Yeah. So it's like, and wrong. let's try to avoid, you know, the basic errors. <laughs> so I write in Evernote just because it has inline spell checking. Oh, nice. Um, and it also, you know, obviously you can put it on your phone, your iPad, and it has a desktop application and a web application. So you can get to it whenever you think of something. Oh, you're sitting in bed and you think of a funny joke, you grab your phone and just type it in real quick. That's cool. Um, so you don't forget it. Um, and the result of that is now I have a note for every character, and then each character has just bullet points upon bullet points of jokes and gags relating to that character. So I have... You know, when I first started, I was a little concerned that, oh, what if I run out of ideas, you know, in the first year, the first 20, 50 pages or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I can sit down now and write, um, like, oh, here, here's a gag I want to do. And it turns into five pages worth of material. So I, I have, yeah, I'm not worried about running out of stuff quite yet. And so is that one of those things where, even though you've got, like, you may not have used them all, but you've got so much information written down in notes on every character. Like, it may not have come into the comic yet, but you've got screeds and screeds of back information for them. Yeah, and it's frustrating because it makes me wish that I could draw the comic a lot faster because I have so yeah. much stuff in the bank. Mm -hmm. And I want right. to share it, you know. Jealous. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's super fascinating to me to, to know that there are people out there that, that write uh, basically as they're drawing, because I don't do that. Like I And I can't imagine starting to draw a strip and not know what the dialogue is going to be. So how, how do you do that? Well, I mean, when I sit down to write a page, I have the actual, like, the word bubbles. I have everything that's... By the time I've gotten to that point, like I said, I'm usually multiple pages ahead. Um, so I have the actual just dialogue done, mm -hmm. but... When I say I continue writing it as I'm drawing the page, I, I just keep thinking of jokes to put in there. I you see. know, so Sydney, the main character, is talking about whatever. Like, oh, I, I Jesus. this is something I did a while ago, and it, I have to do a, a picture of a like the inside of a you know Chinese antique shop. So instead of just drawing a bunch of little knickknacks on the counter, I'm like, okay, I'll draw a mogwai. Why not? And I didn't write that when I was coming up with the page. I just right, as right. I'm drawing it, I need space to fill. 
um, and I have space to fill, I just keep, oh, I'll, I'll put Lionel's sword in here, tee-hee, you know, and just <laughs> keep adding, 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 adding. So, Do you tee-hee to yourself often? I, I do sometimes, and I, I guess that's a pretty good sign when I can look at a page. Mostly it's if somebody is having a crazy reaction to something. All of Sydney's facial expressions are amazing. Yeah, my art <laughs> style is always a balance between, because I, I grew up on superhero comics, I mean, like, literally before there was manga in, in mm -hmm. the U.S. Yeah. And yeah. so that's pretty much what I drew like. But then I discovered manga, and my art style started absorbing that into it. And mm -hmm. so my comic is like this blend of of different styles. and It works, though. In, in, initially, my intention was that each character would have a slightly different style. So... Mm -hmm. Sydney I was would be say, it more. It seems like Sydney is slightly more manga style. Yeah, the expressions and everything. Yeah, because she's the one, usually the one who's do, who does the crazy expressions. But I don't limit it to only her. If there's if there's cause mm -hmm. for someone to have a crazy expression, why not? Um, and then like Maxima is sort of like the the stern American style superhero, you know, with the, mm -hmm. all the extra hatching on her and the scowly face and stuff. Mm -hmm. But and as the I cold skin. yeah, and I as I as I do the comic, I kind of I kind of normalize that a little bit. So it didn't. It wasn't quite as jarring. Um, yeah, but so it's like it's this blend that gives me a lot of flexibility when I draw. That's awesome. Let's see what else do I have to ask you? Um, uh, do you have any buffer at all on your art or your writing? Uh, at the moment, I have a one-page buffer. Um, when I started, I I had like an eighteen-page buffer. Because before I actually put the comic online, I was like, can I actually do one of these a week? Like, can I make myself, like, sit down on a Saturday and not play Call of Duty until I go cross-eyed um, and actually make myself do this? So I started developing a process before I put it online. It's like, okay, so here's the fastest way to color. Here's, okay, I like using this lasso tool versus this one or I magic wand this stuff. So I had a lot of stuff, you know, built up before I put the first one online. And then one day I was just like, man, I've got 18 of these done. I guess I should just put it online. I was like, maybe <laughs> I should wait for some anniversary. Maybe I should wait till like the, the start of the new year or my birthday or whatever. And I was just, no, yeah, just whatever. I'll just, I'll just start posting it on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that eroded pretty quickly, partially because, I mean, partially because, you know. I, life or whatever. Office do. Yeah, life <laughs> happens and whatever. But also because I didn't like drawing a page and having 18, a buffer of 18 pages, knowing it would be 18 weeks before people saw the page that I just drew. Isn't that maddening? Yeah, it is kind of crazy. So I, I, let, I intentionally let my buffer erode, and I meant to go down to about four. I thought that was decent. But then, you know, it got out of hand, and I went down to zero for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and after a while, I was like, man, you know, I know I can make myself sit and do this, but what if I, like, lose power one weekend or something? I, th there's stuff bone. that I can't control, so I have to have some buffer. So I built myself mm -hmm. back up to one. That's a good idea. And, and actually... Pages, oh, sorry. sorry. I was going to say, the pages take 14 to 18 hours, maybe, to draw, because it's a full-color comic. Right. Page. Right. Um, yeah, it's rough. Good but, uh, <laughs> Steven's brain just melted? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> I wish I could do them faster, I'll tell you what. They, they are gorgeous, though. So yeah. at least the payoff's good. <laughs> it shows, yeah. Um, yeah. But what was I going to say? Oh, I've lost it. Weekends. Uh -oh. <gasps> um, yep, gone. All right. Everybody wait for Carrie. <laughs> Hurry up, Carrie. What are you going to say? Don't wait for me. Um, let's see. Carrie. What else were going to say, Carrie? We're going to rush you. Oh, I was going to say that... Uh, having even a buffer of one comic when you only post once a week is it makes a huge difference. Like, that's really all, like, you're a week out at that point. You know what I mean? Just like, the weight off your mind is amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, we don't have a buffer anymore. Uh, we did, but then, you know, life. So yeah. Yeah. that's what a the buffer's for. state of panic. Yeah. yeah, see, I'm a firm believer in the buffer. <laughs> an extreme yeah. firm believer. I, I, I have every hope in the world that uh, when you start posting that you can maintain the buffer. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I'm trying <laughs> as well. But having it's at least really having at least uh, at least one in the in the tube. I mean, I spend most of my weekends drawing, mm -hmm. which means that like uh, the one convention I go to that's local. I don't have anything to sell yet, so I just go and attend. Is this big anime convention called Acon in Dallas? Mm -hmm. So, but I know a year ahead of time when that's going to be. So I know that I have to have that buffer 
ready for that. But then it also means that if, like, there's also the Dallas Comic Con, which is like a month before that, um, I can't go to both. So unless I have, like, two buffer. And the thing is, if you burn part of your buffer, then you need to, like, double time it the next week to build your buffer back up, which is a pain in the butt. So, so have fun not eating or sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when your comic takes, you know, 14 hours to make, which is rough. Yeah. Um, uh, see, I can't see that. I've been able to make mine, but mind you, I do my traditional method, so... Well, part it doesn't of the, take me part nearly of the, that long. Part of the issue is that I, I won't say I'm not... I'm a bad artist, but I'm... It takes me a while to get to where... Like, it takes me many drafts to get a lot of pictures looking the way I want. Like, I'll, you know, rough in the little bubble shapes and do the little cross for the eyes in the middle of the thing. Then I'll, like, oh, that's a boring pose, and I'll take the transform tool. I work all digitally because mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just so much faster. And I wish I had physical originals because, if nothing else, at some point you can start selling those, and that's a yeah. nice little yeah. uh, buffer. And plus, I like working with mechanical pencils and erasers. I've got a huge pile of them, and I can't help every time I go into... Hobby Lobby or Michaels, I walk out with a $15 mechanical pencil that I never use. <laughs> um, oh, well. Uh, but yeah, I, I spend a lot of time, oh, that head's too big. Transform, shrink, I do a lot of right. little tweaking and stuff when I'm doing the penciling, so I, I need to... It's one of those things where people yeah. reading it will probably just be like, oh, it's a page, but yeah, it's one of those things where as the artist, it's like, no, it's not right. Appreciate it for a it long as, time. I pictured it slightly it. different. Redo it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've definitely been there uh, fiddling with facial expressions uh, for the sketches and stuff. Uh, you know, trying to make them just right. And then I'm like, I've been working on this this grayscale, like, silly sketch that's just going to get lined over for an hour. I'm like, why am I still working on this one face? Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time on expressions, too, just because, you know, a lot of my reference material is other comic books, mm -hmm. but I... I tend to draw a lot of expressions that you just don't see in comic books a lot. You know, because comic books these days, I mean, it depends on who you read, obviously, but the, the kind of, the people that do the kind of line work that I like, you know, Joe Maguire, um, guys that do, like, really intense, like, powerful rendering, mm -hmm. um, have, they're, they're talented artists, but they have such a limited scope as far mm -hmm. as the stuff they produce. I'm not saying they couldn't produce something more lighthearted, but everybody's all scally and, you know... Uh, yeah. So, but finding someone who is trying to do a picture of somebody who is intrigued but kind of grossed out. Like, how do the eyebrows look? Like, ooh, you know, yeah. the, the, the stretch on their neck and their face. And, like, there's, there's a lot of call in my comic for stuff other than I'm smiling or I'm mad, you know. Right. Do you find yourself you making that face as you're trying to draw it? I have done it before because... Google image search is surprisingly bad when you're it trying to three-quarter yeah. side view, you know, woman. Uh, intrigued but grossed out. Intrigued but grossed <laughs> out. I mean, like, you know, I, I find a little bit better luck on, like, deviant art. Um, but, yeah, I just tend to go to Google image search for most things. So, I, you know, I have my webcam, and I'll, I have a lot of pictures of me doing claw hands and weird angles and, like, holding something... Because like, I, I don't know that I had ever drawn anybody holding something other than a sword or a gun before I drew this up. <laughs> but now it's like I have to have somebody holding a book, and I'm like... What is hand? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm taking pictures of my hand from weird angles and stuff, so... I mean, what is hand and finger? No. I, yeah. I have to do that a lot, too. Uh, Especially yeah. since you draw a comic with a guy with hooves. Yeah, hooves is weird. I'm just like, ah, he's holding something with his hoof. Shut it's, up. Yeah. <laughs> it's unicorn magnetism. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's called magic, motherfuckers. It's everywhere. One time I'm going to do a comic about that. I was going to say, like, you know, how do you how do you pick stuff up? How are you playing PlayStation? He's he's yeah. totally using unicorn magic to do it, but I just haven't discussed it at all in the writing. Yeah. So I, I, I better make a joke about it at some point. Did you know, Carrie, that the creepiest thing you could possibly draw would be a horse or unicorn with human hands? <laughs> Yeah, I should, probably, I should probably get that out of the way right away. Just, just throw it up on, like, do a fan art of my own comic with Barry with hands. That's horrible. I, I would do it. <laughs> I would do it for like your Halloween special. Like he gave himself oh, hands, and he stuck with it for twenty-four hours for some reason. 
Oh man, or I don't want to talk about unicorn like, hands. <laughs> or he just, has, he just has fingers coming out of his hoof. That'd be even oh, more worse. That's gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> we're having we're having priceless conversations right now. Back to girl power like, and less of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Killed I was going to say you could have him contorted in a beanbag chair, like holding a book and turning a page with his bottom feet, <laughs> and then holding like a cheeseburger and a drink with his other ones, and <laughs> looking absolutely gross. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> too far, too far. No. Stupid tangents. Never too far. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, back to girl power. Um, so we've talked about your buffer. Do you, so, and also that you've been sort of stewing on this idea for you know ten plus years or so. Um, do you know whether or not girl power has an ending? Um, you know, I'm I'm generally not a fan of comics that don't have endings. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like I said, I grew up on American comic books, but while the storytelling in manga tends to be not great, I mean, it's kind of targeted for kids and stuff, and if you watch an entire arc of an anime or a manga, really the plot kind of falls apart about halfway through. Yeah. Um, but I still prefer that to the American way of doing comics, where every 12 issues, the writer and artist swap yeah. out, and all of a sudden... Like, I was really? I picked up uh, Power Girl um, drawn by uh, Amanda Connor, who is uh, really, really one of my favorite comic book artists. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really good. It's, it, it had those moments where, you know, she's in a theater watching a movie with a friend, and then the bad guy attacks. But you have that stuff before the requisite fight. Right. Um, stuff that I like. Um, but then, like, issue 13, it was a different writer and a different artist, and it's like, I mean, her costume looks the same, but this is not the same character anymore. I mean, all the storylines that were they were working on are gone. You know, the, the friendship she was building with Tara is gone. It's just it's completely different. It's like it may as well oh, be a different. Disappointing. Title. So for girl power, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, as long as I can keep it entertaining, um, I'd love to keep doing it. Uh, you know, the exception to the sort of standard comic book rule is the one that I always reference in the comments is one that was a big influence on me for doing girl power, which is one called Gold Digger. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, it's done yeah. by a guy named Fred Perry who does it for Antarctic Press. And the thing I like about Gold Digger, besides the fact that it's insane and completely funny and I love the art, um, besides all the stuff that makes it super great, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> is he's been doing it for 20 years. I mean, he himself has been writing, penciling, like, I think the only thing he doesn't do is, like, edit it. Um, but he colors it. Um, he can do two, sometimes three pages a day. The guy's a machine. That's um, awesome. But it's the same writer and the same, you know, artist for 20 years of story arcs, um, mm -hmm. and and I and I love it because all it's all consistent throughout. Yeah, and that, uh, so, that's one of the cool things about uh, sort of independently creating your own comic strip is that like there's no danger of ever you know having put in you know so much effort and time and and uh, gusto I guess into making a, you know a, however many issue run only to have the property taken out of your hands. And being totally redone by the next writer and artist, you know. Yeah. So there's no that's that's one of the best reasons I think is to not get your IP taken away from you in a way. You know? Yeah. Yes, hang on. Yeah, to just it with just both throwing this out there to anybody listening who is thinking about it, have it checked by a lawyer if somebody offers you a contract. <laughs> yes. Just, just let them give it a once over and see if it's fair. See if you're not. There are several yeah. lawyers out there that specialize in IP content. That's cool. Yeah. It's too bad that it has to be like that, though. That happens enough that there are IP lawyers now. Yep. Yeah. The old, nah. if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Just yeah. Yeah. So to answer your question, I don't have a planned ending, but I have enough storyline. Well, especially at the rate of one page a week to last me for twenty years. <laughs> if I could do it now, if I could do it full time at the rate that I. At the, at the optimal rate, I'd probably try to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. So I know <clears throat> there are comics out there that do more than that, like uh, Jeff Jocks does questionable content, and that's a full page, full color. I mean, it's flat shading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I've seen him draw a comic from start to finish in like two and a half hours. Uh, Doesn't that make you... And it's, all, it's also not crazy. amazingly like dynamic poses and yeah, amazingly it's all pretty much complex just... backgrounds and stuff, but it's he's obviously deliberately done that, so he's able to yeah, bring it out a bit faster. It. 12 years, but I, I think like the closest analog to uh, like the kind of comic that I do is uh, like Girl Genius, and that's mm. Phil Foglio doing that three times a week, but he's the artist, his wife's the writer, and they have a colorist. So, you know, so I would never give up. 
is outsourcing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe maybe one day when I get the first arc of the story done and I get ready to do a book, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my stretch goals will be if I hit this, I'll hire a colorist for 50 bucks a page or something. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that would double the rate at which I could do them, but it would certainly speed it up. You know, instead of, you know, four a month, I'd get six. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just like to throw out cloning as an alternative. Yes, cloning. That's yeah. true. I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. You could uh, 3D Sounds print yourself. Company. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ooh. Wait about another 20 years for that. <laughs> just uh, eject some stem cells into the printer cartridge and. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there you go. And All right, time. clone me. Let's go. Yeah. And it totally won't be evil or try to kill you. No, no it, just... but it will have the tiny goatee. And you totally won't end up going, right, clone, now you take 14 hours to do a comic, I'm going to play Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd alternate on that. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. At first. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, what other questions do we want to ask you? Because we've still got quite a bit of time. Art-wise, what are some of your inspirations? Yes. Um, inspirations primarily, primarily other comic artists. Um, like I said, I grew up on American comics, and then... It integrated a lot of uh, manga type stuff. And if I could make my comic look like anything, the closest thing I could think of would be like uh, Mazumi Shiro, like a, a ghost in the shell, where the character models are relatively simple, but mm -hmm. you still get a lot of detail in like, you know, guns and tanks and backgrounds and stuff like that. I, I don't have the, the talent or time for that quite yet. Um, I'm working on the talent and who knows where the time will come from, but. Uh, obviously, Fred Perry of Gold Digger, um, who has that American Americanized manga style. Um, I like uh, Masumi <laughs> Hiro. Oh, he can't. Uh, I said Masumi Hiro. Uh, Joe Madura, who does um, uh, he did uh, Battle Chasers and Ultimate X Men, I think. No, not Ultimate X Men. Just just plain X Men when they first booted that series. Um, when they rebooted it. Yeah. Uh, and then he now he does, now he does character designs for uh, Vigil Games. I think it's called. He did uh, Dark Siders, um, yeah. which to me is you know, he's he's really like technically one of the best comic book artists. I think. Um, like I said, his his range of expressions in the comic is never that varied. But that's usually the stories, the sorts of stories that he writes for. They don't call for you know zany expressions. Right. Um, so I wish he was doing that instead of doing, you know, game design, but whatever. That's what he wants to do at this time. <laughs> Gotta follow your bliss. Yep. Can't blame him for that. Nah. Nah. Um, so do you have any writing inspirations? Like things that you uh that you read like read specifically and maybe not necessarily like comics maybe, but like uh who inspires your writing? Uh you know I've I don't know that I've ever thought about that. Um, I, I I do a fair amount of reading. Um, uh, I'll get through about a, a novel every every other week because I'll I'll just grab one when I'm sitting on an exercise bike at work or something mm -hmm. um, during lunch. Uh, but as far as like just flat out writing, like I said, I don't really I don't I mean I write in the sense that I put my dialogue down, I type it in before I jump into Illustrator and do all my mm -hmm. uh, panels, but I don't really write, like, in a novel sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. I mean, there's there's certainly some writers that I like more than others, but I couldn't say that my style it was really influenced by them, because oh, okay. writing is a skill that... I mean, I, I've, I've tried to do it, and when I, when I... When I try to write, like, just large amounts of prose, I wind up getting bogged down in, like, high, like the turn of phrase and try to make my writing sound more clever than it is instead of just, you know, like, you know, like with Kevin Smith, I can write dialogue all day long because mm -hmm. that's just how people talk and that's easy to replicate, I think. Um, but like describing, you know, environments and coming up with interesting words for, um, that are analogs for other, other kinds of words, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, the, the bark of the pistol or, or the report of the pistol, you know, things right, like, right. I would never think to write something like that. Um, so yeah, I I don't think my writing has direct influences. Okay. 
is it the same for humor? Like, is there anything in particular that you... Yeah, for humor, yeah. Uh, I think my favorite kind of humor is is fast, snappy humor, like, uh, and also understated humor. Uh, I don't know if understated is, is the right word, but like in uh, 30 Rock, have you seen that? Yeah. Yep. Um, where someone, you know, a lot of a lot of the humor in that show is somebody, two people are talking, somebody says something crazy, they do a reverse cut to the person they're talking to just long enough for you to see them tilt their head like, what? But then immediately snap back to the first person talking and they just they just move past the joke. They don't, <laughs> they're like, ah, joke, ah, punchline, ah, ah. You know, because there's a lot of things. Pause for laugh track? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, it, that sort of stuff. And I really like understated humor, which is why when I do my pages, it's not, <clears throat> you know, I am telling a story and I want to fill it full of jokes, but I don't do a page where here's the setup and the last panel is here's the punchline. Um, if anything, here's somebody's I'll, wacky reaction. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I'll actually, if I come up with a page that feels like the punchline is the end piece, I'll actually try to move the punchline to the middle of the page and then, or, or at least the second to last panel and, and have something else to, to lead up, lead the page out. Because mm -hmm. um, it, I don't. I don't know how good I would be at doing like a three-panel comic strip where where it is set up, middle, punchline, right? It's tough but, to not do the same thing over and over and over again on accident. Yeah. Because it's so it it can get real formulaic after a little bit. But yeah, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, come on! That's always the fun part. <laughs> is yeah. disposing yeah. of the low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Well, there's nothing That's wrong with thing. Yeah, the low-hanging fruit. Um, but like I said, if, if you come up with a joke that's that's too obvious, then, I mean, since I'm doing, you know, stories with multiple characters in it, like, there was one joke I came up with. Um, it's, it's not in the comic yet, but basically someone asked someone else a question, and they come back with, like, this big, long, like, like a big, long, funny, you know, piece of dialogue, and then someone calls him out on it. It's like, are you doing stand-up? Are you doing a bit? You know, <laughs> I think I think calling out the joke, not and not and not in a hey, look at this joke, look how funny it is, but almost like that's not even a joke. What are you doing? Um, yeah, weird. I think, that, I think that adds to the humor. Yeah, you, you downplay it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, humor is weird because it's like if you if you sit there dissecting it a little too much, then you're like, is this even funny anymore? I don't know if that happens to you, but it totally happens to me where I'm just like, I'll oh, yeah. do something I'm like that sounds pretty clever, and then I'll sit on it for a while and come back to it. And I'm like. Well, I liked it yesterday. I'm not sure what's going on today. And then I'll ask a few more people, and they're like, "Yeah, it's fine." And I'm like, "Okay, well, obviously, I'm I'm just desensitized to it now." But uh, so that, I'm not sure how the quote goes. But there was a quote. Uh, God, I'm gonna butcher it. But it's um, humor like a frog dies when you dissect it. <laughs> just like if you stare at it for too long, it won't be funny anymore. No matter how much you punch it up, no matter how much you change the dialogue, it'll be like, well, well, it's kind of like strangling might not be it good. after a while. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever worry that your stuff's not like that? What you wrote, like, because I I know that um, doing things at a at a weekly pace, um, you kind of have a little, maybe a little too long to stew on it before moving on to the next thing. Do you ever feel like insecure about uh, quality bef because of how much time you have to think about it? Not for the humor, but there are there are scenes where uh, I'm worried about how the page will break up because. If I can't fit everything on one page, because I, I have literally done pages with I think eighteen panels, which is I mean that's terrible. That's, I mean if yeah, you're reading a comic, horrible. yeah. If you're doing if you're reading a comic book, it should be like five to eight panels tops. Right, yeah. just to keep it um, clean. Yeah, but sometimes I just I couldn't figure out how else to break up the page, um, and and in those cases, you know, well I could have broken up the page. I mean eighteen panels, right? You do nine on the first page nine on the second page. Right. But the problem is the setup, I think, becomes it gives away the rest of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I always want to do it on the one page. Um, yeah. So I'm worried, about, I'm worried about giving stuff away. And for you know whatever reason, I have a lot of people commenting on the comic. I mean, not that I'm... You have tons of commenters. Yeah, nuts. and I'm, yeah. I'm just surprised at how um, engaged some readers are. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because, I don't know, I, there are a lot of comics out there with much larger audiences that seem to get less comments. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, maybe it's a combination of, it's that intersection of, like, superheroes and pop culture and, you know, Science humor and everything else stuff. that just, 
people really really grab on. I mean, obviously, I like the comic. You know, it's it's I, I, <laughs> that's good. You, know, you make it well. You, I mean, you make a comic that the sort of comic that you want to read. I would assume right. most people do that. Right. Um, but so some of the comments get, you know, people. It's almost like when when, when Lost was online or mm -hmm. was on the air, like people would, the minute a show was over, there were forums would fill up, oh, what did that number mean? And what is the polar bear and the mist? And, and people are trying <laughs> to dissect and analyze everything. And that'll happen with my comic where I'll post something and it seems kind of innocuous and people will sit there and analyze it, which is, I mean, it's cool that they do that, but it's also, I have to be careful what, what I present in the comic that I'm not giving something away, yeah. but I don't want to telegraph things that are coming up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but I also too don't want to be foreshadowing at the same time. But... Yeah, I also don't want to be so obtuse that I'm. It's like it's like reading a bad detective novel where <laughs> the, the the end reveal is well, how are we supposed to know that you didn't give us enough to go on? You know, nobody could guess that while they were reading it. Yeah. The problem is nowadays with online forums where a hundred people can compare facts and oh, I just happen to know that you know if you take this binary code that he put in the background on a, on a whiteboard and reverse it, it actually means this and that's Whoa. a foreshadow of that, you know, all crazy stuff. So, Is it stuff that you didn't intend to be in there? Like, are they, fi are they, are they finding things that aren't there, or are they, or is it all intentional? Oh, hey, cat. Um, Dave's cat um, is hanging out with us. Hey, there, kitty cat. Oh it's a big kitty. Oh, <laughs> this is the cat palate cleanser. So cute. Um, I, I think people will just um, extrapolate a lot of stuff. So I've, I've, part of it doesn't want, want to worry about that, and part of me wants to make sure that I'm not just giving stuff away if it's going to be a cool reveal. Like for instance, okay, here's a good example. Um. When I originally set up the web page, um, I have a cast page, and I was thinking, okay, so Sydney's arc is, she has this tube that she doesn't open, and people are, what's in the tube, whatever, um, she goes to the bank, she meets one of the main characters, and eventually the tube gets open, and I was thinking, well, that's, I don't know, that's, how many pages is that, 20, 30, I'll get to that before I have any kind of audience at all. So on the cast page, it has, here's this character, and here's their power. So on Sydney's thing, it had, here are Here's what's in the tube. Because um, I had never, I had never presented anything like this online, some kind of ongoing story, and it didn't mm -hmm. occur to me that people would go, "Oh, what's in the tube? That's cool. I can't wait to see what's in the tube." So yeah. eventually, I removed it from the cast page, um, <laughs> and I also put Sydney's um, superhero name on the title bar, which is not that big of a deal. But on the page leading up to where they decide what her superhero name is going to be, that would have been fun. Like, hey, everybody, you know, put suggestion. I mean, they did anyway. You know. Right. If we didn't already know what it was, here's what. Uh, so it's it's stuff like that where I have to be, I have to think about stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. they'll call you out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You should start putting bullshit breadcrumbs that don't make any sense and that aren't really have no bearing on anything, just in the background. Ah, <laughs> uh, non sequiturs. Because they'll, they'll they'll find it and analyze it and then it just won't go anywhere. <laughs> well, I don't want to be an exercise in frustration, but I I can see doing <laughs> that, where. Um. I don't know, maybe have a bad guy in in the comic that who is actually trying to mislead the characters. Oh, interesting. So they're obviously the audience is reading that, going, "Aha! This is what I think it means." But it turns out the guy was just running two plans at once. You know, that's cool. I don't know. Yeah, I, guess I could see doing something like that, but I wouldn't want to put stuff in there that's just total nonsense. Deliberately people. messing with, with yeah. the readers, which is probably a bad idea. But ah, come on, <laughs> have a good jab once in a while. You should, uh, you should put weird stuff in the back of Steven Nonsense. <laughs> subliminal. Yeah, right? subliminal messaging. I'll have superheroes <laughs> flying in the background to get weird. I, mean. I think the last, I think the last time somebody asked about logistics in Juniper was uh, when Barry had pants on. They asked where his tail was or if he had a tail. And I said that he did. It was just in there somewhere. He just and tucked it. <laughs> so I, but I don't think I give them much to think about in general. <laughs> besides, well, how is this unicorn wearing pants right now? <laughs> well, unicorn pants have a little pouch of holding. Yes. <laughs> just pop your tail in there. there. Yep. Otherwise, you got to feed it down the, the pant leg, and it's just a mess. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, just a mess too suggestive. Your hair gets pulled. I mean. <sighs> yep. You pull it out. It's all like a rat nest. <laughs> pants hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, there was like five more jokes in there that I didn't exploit. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what else should we ask you? How about this? What do you want to talk about, David? Uh, I can tell you about how we do the art, basically. There you go. Let's we'll see that. Um, so the, the program I've done the most, most of the comic with is uh, this one called Paint Tool Sci, which mm -hmm. um, I was originally planning on doing it in Photoshop because that's what most people use. But uh, I found that uh, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's drivers or a combination of video drivers or whatever else, um, Photoshop just wouldn't produce very smooth lines. I don't know. Maybe it's just I have a shaky hand. But you know, Sarah's been experiencing that a little too. She moved over to Manga Studio for our lines. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking so, of doing that too. It seems to be getting worse. Yeah, so as I as I was, you know, like I said, I had that big 18-page buffer as I was kind of ramping up my production. I was like, okay, what is my what is my uh, what is my factory floor look like? Okay, I do this, and I go to this, and I go to this, I do the lettering here, and all that stuff. So I started with Photoshop, but I started experimenting with other programs. And I had, you know, I've been using digital art programs since like deluxe paint on the Amiga. So I knew there were other <laughs> options out there. Um, so I started exploring other stuff. I have a copy of Painter. Um, uh, I've got, uh, I basically have tried almost everything. And uh, I started searching around for this issue that I was having with Photoshop with the, the, the wobbly lines. And uh, <clears throat> I, I came across a forum that said, hey, try this Japanese program called Paint Tool Sai. So, you know, I tried a bunch of them and eventually I landed on Sai. And like the minute I was like, I drew my first line. I was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, what it's meant to look like." Yeah. Orgasm. <laughs> it, it was almost. It was it's almost an like art orgasm. It is. It really. It, it was. It was <sighs> such a marked difference between that and any other program that I've used it. Now the problem with Paint Tool Sci is that it doesn't have any text tools. It doesn't have a couple of like really basic things like a polygon lasso tool. Hmm. Um, it's real. Yeah. It's there are ways around that, but. Um, but I almost hesitate recommending it to anybody because it's so good at just drawing that mm -hmm. the lack of other tools, you're like, I can, I can live without those other tools because everything else is, is so nice, like the painting and the coloring. Um, now, uh, and then I do my lettering in Illustrator. Um, if, you, if you go on YouTube and search for uh, Scott McCloud's method of doing it, mm -hmm. um, he basically sets up um, a bunch of bits and bobs in Illustrator <clears throat> where like certain layer effects are, an oval automatically has anything on that layer has a black outline around it. And the reason he does that is, you move the black bubble, put the words over top of it, and then you move the tail, and they automatically merge. But they're not, they're not one piece. So you can drag and rotate and move them around separately, but it always looks like one nice solid piece. It's actually a pretty good way to do it, I think. So gotcha. I, I adopted that and built my own template. Um, recently. I'm trying to migrate myself to another program called Clip Studio Paint, um, which is apparently so. Manga Studio Five um, is is definitely worth picking up. It's it's leagues better than Manga Studio Four. Uh, they redid the entire brush engine, and it's much closer to the way Paint Tool Sci works, but it doesn't have the most robust tool set because it's Manga Studio Five is like the the EX version, you know, like the cheap hundred dollar version. Mm -hmm. right. um, Clip Studio Paint, from what I can find online, is what Manga Studio 5 Pro will be. Um, gotcha. So it's, it's a more robust tool set, um, and it has that same, it's almost as good as Sai, and if you're not spoiled on Sai already, you'll, again, you know, when you go from Photoshop to Manga Studio 5 or any other program, like, there's a lot of Japanese programs I've tried, like, uh, uh, Open Canvas and Illa Studio and a bunch of other ones. Open um, Canvas they're all, is so weird. Yeah, it is. But it the the, the drawing tools in it are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I so, like Art Rage. Have you guys tried that one? I've tried that, but I have I've never used natural media. Like when I drew, I always used mechanical pencils and you know rapidio liners and like really really fine pointed things. And so. Mm -hmm. Art Rage is like, here, draw with a crayon, a crayon. Here, draw with a big floppy brush. And I, I can't, since I can't make my comic in it the way I want it to look, I, I could never find a, a reason to invest enough time to learn how to draw with it. Mm. I mean, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it, but I just, I would have to basically relearn a lot of skills to do anything productive with it. 
All the skills you need is being able to draw in glitter because that is what Art Rage gives you. It's <laughs> true. Glitter. Well, if you're going to go to a protest, you need to be. <gasps> ponies! <laughs> ponies and glitter. A protest against ponies, apparently? <laughs> yeah. That makes yeah, so I'm so now I now I work in Clip Studio Paint, which is it's it's still the Japanese version, and I, I I managed to figure out you know stumbled my way through the gauntlet of Japanese pages and Google Translate to buy a copy of it, and then I found the same forum. If you if you just Google for paint tool side, the first thing that comes up is the forum that says here's an English translation of it. Here's a <laughs> patch you do. So like they also have Clip Studio Paint in there, and uh, um, but I can't wait for the. Manga Studio 5 Pro version of this mm -hmm. because um, one thing that Clip Studio Paint does that I can't seem to get working, probably because it's you know Japanese path names or something, is it has this big I think Manga Studio 5 the English version now has this too but they have like 3D models that you can place in a scene oh, like a chair, and just, okay, scale it so that it's right proportional that you can just ink over top of it. That's great. Um, apparently Clip Studio Paint has a huge library of stuff like that, like cars and posable you know, uh, people. Cars um, are literally the worst thing ever to draw. Yeah, I'm not. I think you'll find it's horses for most I think people. That you are mistaken. I, I'm, I'm just gonna go sit in a corner and play with my watercolors and like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you draw a car with watercolors. It's not hard. Ugh, shut up. Being driven by a horse. <laughs> yeah, I love you too, horse. Karen. <laughs> I did. I did write a comic recently where Barry is driving. So get ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy driving, filthy driving. Really, this is punishment only on myself. <laughs> to figure out the logistics of that. So, yay! Said yeah. half crying. <laughs> yeah. <that was> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. That was definitely the interesting thing about doing a comic was, you know, coming from that superhero background, I did a lot of just pinups, and here is sexy anatomy looking good and posing and stuff. But you know, they say when if you go into a apply for a job doing pencils at Marvel, they don't say draw the Hulk. They say draw Johnny Storm sitting on a couch, walking to the fridge, um, you know, washing his car, like stuff that pinup artists have never drawn. Just and so, a weed amount. Yeah, and so when I started drawing my comic, it's like the very first, I don't know, 10 pages are inside a comic book shop with like racks of comics and someone sitting on a stool. It's like, I think I have literally never drawn someone sitting before. Like it's all you know, just yeah. standing and posing and laying down and stuff like that. It's like, that, that was that was a surprising thing to have to, like, I need a reference for someone sitting. That's ridiculous, but... It's so weird how hard it is to draw something that looks natural, natural. with, like, yeah. the, with the weight distributed in all, this, all the right places, you know what I mean? Like, like, what side of, like, which butt cheek they're sitting on or whatever is super yeah. important and things like that. And so to make it look right is really actually pretty difficult. Yeah. Especially if you're really like doing like dynamic over the top poses and so on, and then you just have to draw somebody casually walking. It's like, oh yeah. god, where do, where do legs go? Well, and that was the <laughs> other thing was going from drawing superhero pinups because I have like 15, 18 pictures of Maxima that I had drawn over the years, but before I started doing the comic, I had never drawn Sydney before. Mm -hmm. Like she, right. like I, I was designing her up to the minute that I drew the first page. Yeah, and she's and, like the everyman kind of of the yeah, of the and group. so I went from drawing, you know dynamic, you know, D-cup breast heroines with, you know, decathlete bodies mm -hmm. to Sydney and, you know, the guy who owns the comic book shop with her, Joel, who are just like, you know, typical 90-pound weaklings. And I was like, I cannot draw these shoulders. They don't... <laughs> where is the muscle? I can't do it. There like, is no muscle. Off here or something? <laughs> yeah. So it was like I had draw to learn... Box. Yeah, I had to learn how to draw a lot of stuff really quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would suggest for anybody listening that ha that does have trouble with bodies is to just take a figure drawing class. There, uh, a lot of art stores have them uh, and things like that. A lot of community can... colleges too. Community yes. colleges, yep. Um, and it is crazy how much and how fast you learn about the human body from doing it. Yeah, um, and I, you know, the longer I, I have a, a minor in art, but I only I only did that in college because I was like, well, I need a minor. And I already know how to draw, so that that'll be easy. <laughs> Check. Um, I, I, yeah, and I didn't learn very much from doing it because I didn't care to learn. Because it mm -hmm. was like I don't need to know how to draw, you know, this old naked lady that's up on stage. I want to draw superheroes with huge, you know, Atlas bodies. Um, 
And so you're like, why didn't I draw the old naked lady? Yeah, it's like the more the more I draw a comic, even with even when you know Maxima shows up on screen, who has that superhero in body, mm-hmm. the more I realize, like, learning how to draw basic like figure drawing stuff is is so so important because mm-hmm. I can draw Maxima standing, looking cool, posing, but when she's like you said, the body weight, she's sitting in a chair, but she's also leaning against one of the uh, armrests, um, now all of a sudden, you know, it, not, you know, my first draft looked like she was doing that, but also flexing really hard. Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I was like, well, yeah, so it's like, big, like, shoulder muscles, so I was like, wait a minute, no, I had to slump to some of the, the, how does the collarbone look now? One shoulder mm-hmm. goes down, the other one sort of goes flat, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we make a flexing pose. Yeah. Um, but yeah. uh, I thought you were gonna say I thought you were gonna say you draw yeah. sitting at the desk, but then you're like, all oh, right, well, I'll just have her holding a giant dumbbell as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Eat a sandwich with the dumbbell. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's that stuff's super tough. Um, I like I did have figure drawing classes uh a couple times. I minored in art as and uh, fine art as well. Um, in college, but the I was uh disappointed that we only had ladies because now I don't ha- know how to draw men. <laughs> we had all women models and I, w- I don't even know Weird. what guys look like. <laughs> Without oh, being... I double majored in college, so ha-ha, <laughs> traditional! Ha-ha. Yep. I, yeah. I've got a, Although a major in English, Although I would constantly so, uh, stump my art professors because, you know, I want to draw comics. I've always wanted to draw comics, and so I did more heavy figure-based drawings, and when I got up to, like, the workshop-level classes, Mm -hmm. that's what I would focus on, and every one of my professors would say, I don't know how to rate this. I don't do comics. Illustration work is low art. Oh, that drives me I hate that. I'm like, it's art. It doesn't matter what level of anything you think it is commercially speaking if it's not going to sell then what's the point of making it yeah definitely commercially speaking that's true um yeah that is a weird thing that happens sometimes in comics you'll run across people that don't take you seriously because you're drawing comics instead of painting portraits or you're drawing you're writing comics instead of writing novels and things mm-hmm. like that. I've been hitting the same wall lately, and I wonder if you have too, Dave, at any point. Uh, I've been trying to uh, just join some local writers groups just to improve my writing, you know, maybe do some short stories and kind of have somebody critique them just to improve my overall prose base. Um, and I have been rejected from every one of them because I make comics. Balls <laughs> 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 No, I, I, I can't say I've had that problem. Like I said, I I, I have no um but when when I do writing it's not it's not prose based writing and so I'm not concerned about improving that particular skill. Um yeah, I don't know, maybe just don't tell them that you write comics. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I, yeah. I want to write Twilight fan fiction. Oh join us. Oh There's, come join us. Already. We'll read them aloud at the end. We'll try. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe Twilight yeah. fanfiction is the is the cover to go with. <laughs> you should just, infiltrate them, and then at the end of the giant course, when you're all reading your final things, you just like get to the end, and it's like, and then on the dark and stormy night, he ripped off his cape, and there was another cape underneath, and giant muscles. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a hero. Ha! It's a Throw comic. It on the floor. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> Drop the mic because apparently you have a microphone and walk but out. Drop that is something that I've found challenging, surprisingly challenging, is sequential art. Like, mm-hmm. like, because when I, when I picture all this stuff in my head, I mean, this, the, my whole comic is just the result of daydreams, basically. <laughs> that at some point I decided, okay, I'm going to write this down and maybe if I know this scene and this scene happen, how do I bridge these two so they become kind of evolved daydreams. But mm-hmm. in my head, it just plays out like a movie. It's like, like I said, from 30 Rock, if someone talks, you do a quick reverse shot and then come back to them. But does that mean you draw three separate panels for one conversation? Yeah, um, it's it's weird. It doesn't quite. It's it's in your head. It should work because it's just like, okay, well, these are freeze frames, right, of like a little movie in my head. But for some reason, sometimes it just does not translate. Yeah, or you wind up with a page with eighteen panels on it. Well, yeah, or that each yeah. slice of the conversation 
with the person's facial reaction, which is I like doing the expressions even if they're hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I like doing that's. I mean, that's what I think is is funny is the people reacting to stuff. Mm-hmm. So ha- figuring out how to break down what I see in my head essentially into a, I guess, a storyboard format, like a simplified version, the non-animated version, I guess, um, there is a skill set on its own, which is people, I think a lot of people who draw and do pinups and stuff probably un- underestimate that it's a whole separate skill set. Well, yeah, and it's like, it's, it's like you can have, uh, in long form especially, pacing in a story, like how, how quickly or slowly do you reveal certain things, but uh, panel to panel also has a lot of pacing, like at kind of a, a micro level, you know what I mean? Like, there's different things in sequential art, especially in joke telling, where like you may want to make your panel a bit thinner for a, for a shorter beat. You may want to make it a little bit longer to draw things out. You might want to, you know what I mean? Like there's just so many little things that sort of add up to a good, uh, that add up to good sequential art. You know what I mean? Yeah. As far as writing yeah, and goes. That's, that's actually the level beyond where I'm at because I haven't really considered that. I mean, I know that a page with a lot of dialogue takes longer to read, I mean, sure. obviously, than a page without. So if you if you want to do an action scene that generally doesn't have a lot of dialogue, unless it's Spider-Man giving Dr. Octopus a hard time. Or Deadpool. You know. being yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's another thing that I'll have to kind of learn to do as I do it, because I haven't had really an action scene. I've had like, yeah, someone got knocked over and whatever else happened, but it was like right. one page worth of stuff. You know, Obviously there's a fight coming up because they're superheroes, and I think when I do that, I'm going to go to like, three to five panels a page at most, at the absolute most, and then maybe try to post twice a week, because if they're larger panels, even if they have more detail in them, it, it also means that I'm not drawing 17 faces on a page. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> because action, you can't do action in little panels. It just doesn't Well, work. the composition would just get really difficult to read after yeah. a while, especially if you have, like, maybe two people grappling with each other and their their yeah. bodies kind of overlapping in any way, it would just get really muddy really fast. Yeah. I think. But. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, that'll be an interesting experiment when I get to it. Yeah, I, th- I think you're, I think you're kind of shooting in the right direction there with the, with the bigger panels and, uh, and also the, the uh, more frequent posting during those fight scenes might be appreciated by your readers, you know? Yeah. Well, and I was thinking about that in terms of like, when I finally get a book done, because my original objective was to do something about the size of a volume of Empowered. Have you guys seen that? No, is it good? No. Well, it must um, be. <laughs> Empowered is uh, by a another artist that I really like called uh, Adam Warren. Adam did, Warren, yes, yes. Uh, he did old Gold Digger, uh, Gold, uh, what is it? No, Dirty Pair. Dirty Pair, yeah. primarily what a lot of people would know him from, but... Um, empowered came from him going to conventions and people saying, hey, I want to see the Dirty Pair, like, tied up. And so it's like, okay, there's a flying automated tape buddy thing that wrapped them all up. And so it's like all these bondage pictures of Dirty Pair. So, I mean, you know, if someone wants to pay you 80 bucks at a convention to draw that, why not? Oh, all right. (laughs) He had drawn so much of that stuff that I think think the backstory to it was somebody kept commissioning, like, the same kind of thing over and over. And eventually, in his mind, he kind of developed a storyline for a superhero one who gets tied up all the time. (laughs) Now it's canon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and so he... So, but Empowered is... I mean, if you want to see, like, excellent pencil work and shading and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, I would definitely pick up a volume of Empowered. But it's also, you know, kind of... Adult-rated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not porn, but it's definitely... Probably shouldn't uh, bring it to work. A bit erotica. Fetishy. No, there's... It's erotica. There's, it's it's, actually... it, so the, the main superhero in it has a, has a paper-thin, like, completely, like, really, really skin-tight outfit that it's bulletproof, but Somehow. it also gets ripped up really easily, so it'll save her from a volley of bullets, but then it's all torn up, and then she loses all her powers. Oh, I just so, Googled this, and I have seen this before. I've never read it, but I've seen it on a shelf someplace. Yeah, I, I think they're really funny, because it's a, it's a good uh, uh, merging of many of my interests, let's say. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, but, the book, but the books are, you know, 180, 200 pages long, something like that, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, maybe I'll shoot for that for my first book. Of course, mine's full color, so that's going to be expensive, but I'll figure that out. Um, but I was thinking, you know, at one page a week, that means it's going to be four years before I have my first book at a minimum. Mm-hmm. So I figured, well, if I, if I make these action scenes, if I split them up so that I'm drawing big action and it's two pages, then I can fill out a book longer, but I still want to 
you know, I still have to wrap up the story with the book. I'm not going to finish a book in the middle of a fight scene or something. So, yeah. But that's something to consider. I mean, I'd love to be able to do two pages a week because if I'm going to do 200 page books, you know, I don't want to. I don't want it to be four years between each book that I do. I, that's not. A, you can't make a living off that. I don't think. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's that's no. tough. Uh, we we probably won't be able to put a if we do end up putting a book together we probably won't, won't be able to do it until next year because it, uh, we won't even hit a hundred comics until next year. <laughs> but that's you know I think I think for um, if you're not doing a a, 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 a storyline I mean I think mm -hmm. there's maybe some kind of like evolving story as you know throughout Juniper but it's not like you know it's not a it's not a linear there's not a whole lot of like linear actual like oh th yeah. I can identify this as the plot. Yeah, and you can definitely do a smaller book. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to get to a certain point, point before you put a book out or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just thinking of of uh, I guess heft as far as like, yeah, do I want this tiny kind of like? Well, thin book you know, or, or a... also remember that guys like uh, Brad Geiger or uh, uh, Scott Kurtz who do gag a day type strips, mm -hmm. they do smaller books. Right. They'll do. 20, 30, 50 page books with a bunch of strips in it, and then when they get to the point that they can do a 300 page book, then they, they have that also. So yeah, they have yeah. something to sell in the interim, they also have something that, you know, somebody walks by the table and they don't want to spend 30 bucks on this big thick book, but oh, I've got a ton dollar book, and they'll mm -hmm. get started off. So that's that's really the way to go, and I've almost considered, um, you know, I, I think on page 74 or 75, there's actually a decent break point in the story that I could consider doing a book, but you know, it wouldn't be that much thicker than a comic book. I mean, seventy pages double sided isn't isn't that big, so yeah. I don't know. But you it's could potentially make up your money um, by volume at that point because you probably it probably wouldn't be too expensive to buy it. So I wonder if you could just push a whole lot of them. Yeah, it's it's something that uh, I, the one thing I'm I've been really bad at with the comic is like merchandising. Like I have done no merchandising. Oh man, me neither. I just put one ad box up. That's tough. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I, it's like I, I literally spend 18 hours a week drawing the thing on top of a full-time job and, yeah. you know, having a wife what and the time, you know? mortgage and everything else that you have to do in your life. So it's like, by the time I'm done with the page each week, it's like, man, I just want to watch a movie or something. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, that that part, yeah, I've yeah. been kind of grappling lately with it. It's just like, okay, day job, done. Okay, commute, done. It's like, all right. Uh, I came home and picked up the house a little bit. Okay, I'm going to sit down and do... Okay, it's 9 o'clock. I need to go and be in bed by, in an hour. Shit. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And it just uh, snowballs out of control like that. So that's definitely, I think, the the song we're all singing in a way. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. But, but at some point, you know, it, you, part of doing the comic is sort of like the long-term cubicle escape plan. Yes. <laughs> um, so at some point I will have to think about, you know, more than just making five bucks a day off my banner. You know? Right. Have you thought about putting up more uh, ads on your website? Well, I'm, I've, I've been working on a redesign to the website. Not a redesign. I, I want to widen the page just a little bit so I can put two columns of stuff on the one side. Now, I won't do two columns, just ads and load it up. But I mean, I want to do like, here's a stack of web comics that I read. You know, recommend these. And then maybe an ad next to that. And then here's a, here's a little Twitter widget, you know, with something next to that. So it, yeah. it won't junk up the page too much. Right. Have you used um, Google AdSense, by the way? Um, I use Project Wonderful just because it's a complete no-brainer. Um, and I, yep. from what I'm aware of, it probably doesn't pay the best. In fact, it may pay the worst of almost any of the ad networks, but it's dead simple to set up. Yeah, I was yeah, just going to yeah. say, like, when I when I was running Project Wonderful ads, I, I think I was maybe doing about the same traffic as you. I'm not sure. I think my traffic's gone down a bit since then because I haven't been updating as much. But... um. When I switched from just doing Project Wonderful to putting just a single same-sized Google AdSense thing up on there, I think it was maybe 30 bucks a month or something I was getting at that point from Project Wonderful. Chucked up the Google AdSense one, and that within about two months was getting like $600 a month. What the? Wow. For wow. about the same amount. It's just a matter of whether it's targeted to stuff. So I think, given that you're a superhero comic, it might be worth a look. Yeah, I mean, it's at some point I'm going to go with. I mean, I'll probably keep. I'll always have a single Project Wonderful banner on there because yeah. I'm I am an analytics addict, and yeah, I'm, exactly. It's probably a bad habit, but whenever I visit a web comic, the first thing I do is click on their Project Wonderful ad because I want to see what yeah. their relative traffic is. Even though their, you know, their analytics are completely different from Google Analytics, and you know, it's yeah. a question as to whether or not it even counts as a hit if like if it's a 
Project Wonderful ad at the bottom of the page and people don't scroll down, does that count as a hit? I don't know. But, you know, it, I still like just a one-to-one -one comparison between all the comics yeah. that have Project Wonderful ads. You get some sense of traffic. I don't know. Yeah, you can at least see, like, I'm doing more than this person, less than this person, even if you can't trust the stats exactly. So, you know, you can, yeah, the end, yeah, the end thing is I'll probably have wind up with, like, an ad from three different networks on my page. But I don't yeah. want to, like, make it just it's a safe pop bit. over or watch the slash video before you read the comic. Nobody on the internet has time for that stuff. So you just put it off to the side. You know, no autoplay video, no sound. No rollover BS. Yeah. 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 Rollover is, yeah. like, my least favorite of any kind of ad ploy I've ever seen. Yeah, the popover is... Made me yell and, and swear. Annoying. Although very few sites will do that because they probably watch the traffic plummet when they do that. Well, it just makes you want to start punching things. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, like Stephen, you were saying, flare. yes, <laughs> uh, so, Stephen, you were saying that was AdSense, not analytics that you were advertising with, yeah, right? Yeah, AdSense, um, analytics is just the Google analytics right. thing, like, you just chuck a wee thing on your page, just, it's, it, like, invisible, it doesn't pop up with a box or anything right. for analytics, you just include a wee bit of code so that Google can track your page, and, and then is... you can just keep an incredibly hyper-detailed look at your um, demographics and stuff for ads and like exactly where the clicks are coming from and mm -hmm. down to down to being able to say like okay well I'm in New Zealand and my hometown is Dunedin like you can zoom in on a picture of the globe and say like okay well New Zealand I've had 3,000 hits zoom in and you can clearly see like okay well Dunedin has had 121 Christchurch has had 578 That's I awesome. can see that I've had like three hits from somewhere in Qatar and <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, speaking of analytics, here's a, here's a fun thing to do. If you go into your analytics um, page and look at um, keywords that brought people to your account, Ooh, go to, like, the 500th page of that where it's, like, one or two <laughs> words that people search for. Yeah. And on my comic, it's hilarious. In fact, I, I mentioned this on... There's a Facebook group that some web comic creators hang out on, and then the guys that make um, the Hate Farm comic went and... Mm -hmm did this, and they thought it was so funny that they actually put these search terms on their page. And it was stuff like, for them, it was like Pokemon wieners, and just, just <laughs> oh, weird, God, random stuff. Good. Like, how did that drive them to their page? But um, for mine, it's, it's a surprising number of people looking for, I guess, naked pictures of Power Girl. But I mean, Excellent. my comments are Power so that makes sense. You know, but it's, it's funny yeah. because some, somehow some people will search for the most bizarre stuff and wind up on your page. And then, like, one of them was like, oh, that guy read 17 pages of my comic. Great, you know. Uh, at my last job, I was doing uh, SEM stuff. And there was a way... We, we did use Google AdSense, but not so much in the hosting ad boxes thing as we were making campaigns for other people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> some of the stuff that, that other people would search for, you know, on these, on these ad campaigns were insane. It was like, Google, how do you find a lawyer that, that supports men in custody battles? And that was, the, that was the keyword string they put in. And it's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't know how to use the internet. But there were some random, really horrible, funny ones, too, like, like dog poop lawyer and things like that, where you're like, <laughs> why is this here? <laughs> the one thing that kills me for the AdWord search, as somebody who's been using the internet since before it had pictures, like BBSs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. is when people go to Google and type in HTTP colon slash slash www, like, they, the entire address in the Google search bar, it's like, do you not realize there's, you know, the actual URL bar up there at Save You a Step? Mm -hmm. it, it drives me yeah, bonkers. Yeah, the I don't internet. care as long as I get to my page. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, I might look into AdSense. I uh, I hadn't really, um, for some reason, hadn't thought about it. Uh, does and that uh, Concrete supports that? Yeah, it's um. I think I just yeah. pretty much just chucked it into a wee like div thing in the coding stuff. Right. But it's I don't think it's maybe quite as easy as it is for Project Wonderful. Like there's that plug in Wonderful it's thing. It's really but... easy just to tuck into the code. I'll show you. All yeah. right, Melanie's it's my uh, to... my lovely I mean... web assistant. <laughs> Like I don't want to make any promises because that was ridiculous and that what well, that hasn't stuck at that level by any stretch of the imagination, but it has still stuck well above what Project Wonderful was for me. A but surprising it's all, difference. It's all subjective for people. Like it's a matter of just testing out advertisers until you find out one that works for you. It might just be the keywords that your comic happens to attract or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for me that seems to be the one that works best. Yeah. So disclaimer: uh, not everyone will instantly make six hundred dollars from AdSense. 
Never mind. Yes. Yep. All right. <laughs> or you may make it once and then never again. <laughs> yeah. But it was enough to convince me that maybe I should be checking out other sources of revenue every once in a while instead of <clears throat> as much as I hate it because I love sticking with what I'm comfortable with. But yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, listening to like the project or the uh, Web Comics Weekly podcast, it sounded like all the guys except for like Penny Arcade who can just say, "You pay us whatever we say because we get ten million hits a day." Right. Um, right. Yeah. Those guys would actually do stuff like Project. They wouldn't do Project Wonderful, but they would do AdSense, and they would do like three other networks. But then they would have a plugin that would run a certain ad up to a point that it got okay. These we promised these guys ten thousand hits, and the minute that ten thousand ten thousand hit hit, then it would swap out to another network, and so it would always be yeah. looking for like the highest revenue and stuff. Yeah. Um, is that the like, ad chain kind of thing they're talking about? Yeah, it, yeah ad chain. It's like advertising two hundred one. You know, that's yeah. Project Wonderful is advertising 101. Yeah. You know. I need, like, I need like 100A or something, like something yeah. really below average. I was just listening, to, um, <laughs> just listening to the old Web Comics Weekly again a week or so ago, just listening to, I think it was Scott Kurtz was saying, one of his little tips was saying, um, with, like, with Web Comics marketing and with trying to make money off it and merchandising, it's not a matter of finding one thing that works because there's always a chance that that service will dry up or just suddenly won't make you any money one month, and then what the hell yeah. do you do? He was saying it's like it's a matter of like trying to cram as many legs under a table as you can so that yeah. if one falls you out, you're still going. Until, yeah, <laughs> until it's just a solid cube of legs. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I mean, no matter what you're doing. And no happen. room for your knees. Exactly. Yeah. This has been an um, intellectual conversation brought to you by the trade. The table will be worth <laughs> a lot of money. I'm not sure how the analogy works at that point. <laughs> um, yeah, so ads. Ugh. Um, Yay. <laughs> ads are good. Are my sharks still up there? Is it weird but that's why, it? Carrie, that's part of the reason why we do this. This helps us build our business. I know. Let's see. This is what we're all trying to do, if we can is make this our business, right? Yep. Oh, hey. Yes. The sharks are gone. Why is that? I don't know. Your ad he we're here right now for two cents. Oh, no. Yay. Nobody's bidding. No. No. It's been up there for two days. Why is nobody bidding? <laughs> no. I don't I don't know. <sighs> okay, guys. Shall we wrap it up for the day? Yeah. Probably. I, I know a lot of us have, have things to, to do. and, and uh, That thing with that stuff and that thing? I might be DMing tonight. Oh, I've got the thing. Horrifying. Oh, God. <laughs> Have you gotten anything written? That sounds like it's just on the uh, spot. It is going to be a thing out of a book, and I am terrified. I haven't, I haven't even <laughs> tried to DM uh, for almost a year. And even then, I, was, I had done it twice. So I'm in uh, deep trouble. <laughs> yep. Just read a few pages ahead. Yep. <laughs> at, at a minimum. <laughs> You're all dead. The end. <laughs> we do roll. We have a tendency of rolling terribly all the time, though. So that yeah, actually you know, ha I actually went and tried to play D and D fourth edition, and three separate times, the entire party got wiped out by the first encounter with a bunch of goblins. What? Because <laughs> was like, they can shift and they can do this and that. Nobody is. Ugh. You gotta so, read your character sheet. You can do all those things too, probably. Like <laughs> I, I stuck to three point five for a reason. That's yeah, what a lot of people say. It was just terrible rolling is what it was. It was like, yeah. okay, you need a 13 or better to hit this guy. I rolled a 9. Like, Next. Four <laughs> arms in a row. <laughs> miss, 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 miss. Miss Goblin crit. <laughs> and you're dead. Yeah. yeah. And you're dead. Get a gold star <sighs> for being killed by a goblin. The goblin trips over a rock and brains himself. Fine, <laughs> you guys win this one. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I think we had a merciless DM. Yeah, my husband like uh, has done that before to because we were rolling so poorly for so long. He's like, uh, fucking, it just dies. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the goblin has a heart attack. <laughs> Died. The goblin has been eating too much fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's wrap this up. All uh, right. Thank you, thank you, David, for coming and talking to us. Very much and for uh, David. whenever you want to come back, just let us know and, and we'll talk more shop. Cool. Yay. Yeah. All right. Over.